Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Ryan Burgos. I'm the National Employment Director here at Disabled American Veterans. I uh, want to thank everybody for coming out. Hopefully be able to learn something, take back home to all the veterans you encounter, um, and educate them on how DAV is helping individuals get jobs. Um, but before I start, this bottle that's up here was left at the Sheridan, was brought to me. So if somebody left a bottle at the Sheridan um, by the coffee area, come up here and claim it at the end of the seminar. Um, so, without further ado, I'm going to introduce our guest speaker for the day. Um, the Honorable James D. Rodriguez is the U.S. Department of Labor's Assistant Secretary for Veterans Employment and Training Services, or VETS. He is responsible for preparing America's veterans, service members, and their spouses for meaningful careers. In this capacity, in this capacity and in fiscal year 2023, over 2,400 DOL veterans, employment and training service staff, contractors and grantees served more than 430,000 veterans and military spouses across all agency programs. Mr. Rodriguez is an excellent leader and proud veteran with more than 30 years of experience in the U.S. government, corporate sector, and 21 years in the United States Marine Corps. He possesses a... He possesses a comprehensive background in program management, interagency collaboration, and policy development. He also has extensive senior level experience building and managing multi-million dollar budgets and large diverse teams while meeting the expectations of the President of the United States and large corporate enterprises. Additionally, he has demonstrated experience in developing and leading large-scale international and national programs with a commitment to operational excellence, risk management, and quality assurance. Mr. Rodriguez's recent executive experience includes leadership roles within Deloitte's LLP government and private sector practice and BAE Systems Incorporated government relations department. He also previously served as the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense Office of Warrior Care Policy, Office of Secretary of Defense with, from 2014 and 2017. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. James D. Rodriguez. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Hey, I got to meet a couple of you great Americans. So thanks for giving me the opportunity to say hi to a few people. But look, this is an important conversation because of the fact that we have disabled veterans right now who have a 6% unemployment rate. Our average unemployment rate for veterans right now is 3% for the month of July, which is great because we are below the national average. That's great. But when you look at our veteran unemployment rate that have service-connected disabilities, we're still below the national average for those who have disabilities and are unemployed, so we have work to do. And so one of the things you heard mentioned in my bio, I was the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for the Office of Warrior Care Policy from 2014 to 2017 under President Obama. And so what I did is I led that office based off of firsthand knowledge. And that firsthand knowledge was I retired from the Marine Corps in 2009. My last year in the Marine Corps, I was a company first sergeant for Wounded Warrior Battalion West for the Marine Corps out in California. And so I got to see in 2007, 2008 timeframe, the resources that did not exist for wounded, ill, and injured service members. At the time, I had about 120 Marines and corpsmen who were combat wounded, and we didn't have resources like we do today. So we had to figure that out. How do we support those men and women who we knew were going to have challenges finding employment based off of their service-connected injuries? And so I'm proud to say today we have a hundred, I was going to say hundred, a ton more resources than we've ever had, and that's a good thing. But it means we still also have work to do. And so with the Department of DOL Vets, as you heard in my bio, our programs touch about 440,000 service members, veterans, military spouses each year. And we have a whole slew of programs. If you are not familiar with DOL Vets, what we want to do is ensure that you understand what we do for a living. We are the federal arm, and I say we because I'm going to tell you about my team in a minute because they do all the grunt work. We are the federal arm of employment when it comes to ensuring that our veterans have access to good quality jobs to ensure that corporations understand the value of our veterans and why they do so well in the workplace. I always tell corporations it's not we want to just hire veterans as a charity thing. We want to hire veterans because you all need to understand that we are good for business. It's a business priority 
for people to hire veterans. All the data shows, Bureau of Labor Statistics data show, Pew Research, RAND studies, all these studies show that veterans outperform our non-veteran peers in the workplace. We stay longer in an organization than our non-veteran peers in the workplace. We get promoted faster than our non-veteran peers in the workplace. At the same time, we also contribute to the economy at a higher rate than our non-veteran peers. And so, from a business standpoint, as you heard, I've been in business as well since I retired from the Marines in 2009. From a business standpoint, it is a good business decision. And we have the programs that exist to do that. I have 50 state directors, one state director in every state to include Guam, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands that are designed to meet the community where they are. One of my state directors, Tanya Pardo, is from here from Oregon. She's filling in because one of our other state directors was not here. Then I have two other staff. Where are they at? Are they in here? There we go. They are DAV members as well. So our state directors are veterans themselves. 96% of my 222 government staff are, are veterans. And the rest are associated with the community somehow. So they do this job just like you all do because it is important to us to support our community. One of the things I want to say, because I cannot go without saying this, I am very proud to see so many women veterans in this room. Tanya is a state director who's also a veteran. And the reason I say that is because that's been one of our biggest challenges over the last 10 to 15 years, is getting women veterans to self-identify. And we have programs specifically designed for women veterans because of those challenges. So what I would like is women veterans to continue to self-identify because we know that they are role models. And we know in a state where our military is having challenges of recruiting, seeing role models like that is what we need. We need people to see ourselves in the people who've served. And that's what we need to do for our young men and women. We also need to see that resources do exist after that military service. That's why we have the ability to support someone when they transition out of the military. So we have three phases when they're transitioning out of the military through the TAP program, when they are veterans, and then with coordination with our Department of Veteran Affairs colleagues. Oftentimes people get us confused with Department of Veteran Affairs, and they're a great organization. We work very closely with them at every level of our organization, but at the same time we are distinctly different because our mission is to ensure that our veterans, Guard and Reserve on top of that, and military spouses have meaningful employment. And one of the things I've constantly said is that that meaningful employment doesn't only apply to you as a veteran. How many of you all have children who've gone on to college because of your military service? How many of you all have, raise your hands, right? I'm one of those. So think about that. When we talk about our military service, we're talking about generational wealth. The ability to utilize that service to make sure that our generations behind us are educated and can continue to contribute to the economy. And so that's, again, what I talk about, the value of service. On top of that, we have numerous resources that are at the community levels. I'm going to speak a little bit more about that here when I get the opportunity. But the American job centers that are in your communities, the 900 disabled veteran outreach program leads at the American job centers, at the workforce centers across the country. We have 2,200 American job centers where we have resources across the entire country. And they are the ones who have the pulse on what's happening with regards to employment resources that exist, as well as connectivity to the corporations that exist. How many of you all went through a transition assistance program or an iteration of it? That program has evolved tremendously. Now, we always have work to do. We get a lot of feedback from our programs. But I'm proud to say the Department of Labor Day, that one mandatory day for Department of Labor, we have a 96% approval rating of our program to help someone understand why our programs exist and how they can support each other or how we can support them and then how they are connected to other veterans to help support each other, as well as our partnerships with all the major volunteer support organizations. We're talking about the ability to have a monthly call. We have a monthly call that's spearheaded by my team in Washington, D.C., that talks about all the new things that are happening with DOL vets, all the resources that we have, all of the connectivity that we have at your local levels, because it is indeed a group effort. But what I've always said is I've got a phenomenal team, but all the work really gets done at the state and local levels because of the fact that you are the ones in the community. They're the ones with boots on the ground. So that's why, as a member of DAV myself, I'm also proud to partner with DAV, so thank you. 
My wife, who's a Marine herself, is also a member of DAV. And so this is another reason I continue to push for recognition of our women veterans, but also recognition of our military spouses, because our military spouses have the highest unemployment rate of any demographic in the entire country. Think about that. On average, 21% unemployment rate for military spouses. And so we have to do a better job of ensuring our military spouses are successfully employed because we know in this economy we have to have, in many cases, dual incomes. And so we want to make sure that that is sustainable. And so we are working closely with all of our partners, federal government, corporate, nonprofits, to ensure that they keep military spouses at the forefront of their thoughts when we're talking about how do we support the veteran in their economic transition. So with that, I could talk forever. So as you can tell, I love what I do for a living. So I'm going to step off Ryan and give it back to him and then be available for questions where you have the opportunity. But thank you all for coming and joining this conversation. Thank you all for your do, what you do and your service. So I know um, I didn't flip the slide before you started talking. However, um, this is how you can get in contact with them. Um, the QR code is here. We're also going to be posting the slides, all the slides that we have. Um, it's going to be online for you to see. Um, so you don't need to take pictures or anything like that. But it's going to be online there later on, OK? Um, but without further ado is the, uh, the DAV employment program. Um, again, my name is Ryan Burgos, the National Employment Director. Um, we also have our interim employment committee here. If you guys can stand, please, and, and wave, because all of our resolutions and everything are filtered through these, these people. Um, and then also for our patron employer awards, our, our committee takes a look at all of the awards prior to our distribution and deciding which employer fits that, that category for us. Um, so uh, part of our team, we have our, my assistant, her name is Deanna Stouffer. Um, we have Sir Jeremy Yost, Assistant National Employment Director. Also Mr. Lamar Kowser, Assistant National Employment Director. Um, and then we also have our employment specialist at the office. Um, his, name, his name is Douglas Faber. His big thing in, in the office there is making sure all of our employer awards are good to go, establishing relationships within our local community. So at any point in time, if you guys have a question about a business or you have a business that you want to refer to us, you reach out to, to Doug, okay, or our office, and we'll have all our contact information at the end. Um, but essentially, we're working directly with veterans and employers alike. Um, Getting the word out on base for us is very big, especially this coming year. We've got more job fairs planned next year than we ever have. I think it's imperative that we get on base and help these service members transition because then they're not going to have these unemployment rates that are out there. Okay, um, But then we're also working directly with disabled veteran outreach program specialists and all, also local veteran employment representatives. Um, and this is directly tied to what uh, Mr. Rodriguez was talking about. Um, these guys are stationed within your local communities. If you're needing a job, you have unemployment, you have underemployment, you go directly and use these free resources. You can get plugged into banks of jobs. They can have job, um, job placement services that are there for you. And again, this is all information that you pass on to your fellow veterans. It's not something that everything that you're learning here today, I want to make sure that you don't just keep it close to the chest. Whenever you guys go home to your respective areas, you share with your communities. That's what's important. Every veteran or spouse that you come in contact with needs to understand that DAV is here to help. Um, all of the resources that we have are found at jobs.dav.org. Um, a lot of people have walked around with notebooks and things pulled from our expo booth downstairs. Um, so if you guys remember anything, remember jobs.dav.org, so that way you can um, refer somebody back to us. Um, also, would be remiss if I didn't talk about our strategic partner, Recruit Military. We have Mr. Mike Frankham in the house today. He's been attending convention. <laughs> our partnership with Recruit Military uh, spans over a decade now. Um, together, we've accomplished over 1,000 job fairs. Um, and the, the number that we'll get to a little bit later is the job offers. I mean, nearly 200,000 job offers since inception of the program. I mean, that's an impeccable number that um, it speaks to that our program is working. Um, but together with DAV and Recruit Military, this year we've got 90 traditional events, 18 virtual job fairs. Um, anybody ever attended a virtual job fair or an in-person event? Okay, so a few. By a show of hands, how many people think that if it's a virtual job fair, it's only remote opportunities? Okay, good. So people do pay attention when we talk. It's awesome. <laughs> That's correct, though. So whenever we have virtual events, a lot of veterans that we meet, even at physical job fairs, think, oh, no, 
I don't want to work in a virtual environment. Hey, I'm the same way. I, I got to see people because if I'm going to scroll away and do things on my house that get distracted, I'm not going to end up working. So I don't like to work virtually. Um, however, are the environments that we have um, at these virtual events is basically the same thing as if you're at an actual job fair, except you're not walking around. You're clicking on which booth you want to visit. Okay? You can't say, oh, you know, you're not having a job fair near me. Well, we've got these stationed virtually for a reason, so we can reach the more rural locations. Um, we like to think that we're touching the whole entire United States. Even if you're overseas and you're scheduled to come back soon and you know where you're going to be going, you can attend a virtual job fair. Um, time zone might be a little bit different, but you can attend a virtual job fair. You can get on-the-spot interviews in some cases, hired on the spot in some cases. They can see you, you can see them with just a smartphone. It's too easy to do. Um, but to take it even a step further, all the veteran has to do is register. Let's say they run out of time and they can't attend the actual event. Well, as long as they're registered, all the employers that are at that event will have access to their resume. So let's say that employer is looking for a human resource specialist or communications. Veteran didn't have time to log in for the job fair. Well, whenever they filter every single veteran that attended that job fair or registered for that event, that veteran's resume is still going to populate. There's a lot of different success stories that we hear all the time of, oh, I only signed in for five minutes or I didn't get an opportunity to. I mean, there's employees with recruit military themselves that service member only signed in for five or ten minutes and logged out because he was busy and got a phone call a couple weeks later. So it's just a testament to the fact that you know, these resources are out there. Um, and DAB is doing our best to make sure we tackle it at the forefront. Um, but also we have a toolkit on Recruit Military's website. Um, that's a toolkit that we designed to help with mentorship opportunities, whether it's resume opportunities. Recruit Military and I and us, are, we're also doing resume courses, helping you build the perfect resume, a winning resume, if you will. Um, and then also we have our other corporate partner is Hiring America. So anybody that's been overseas, anybody know what AFN is? Armed Forces Network. So we use them because we have commercials and we've got 30 second time slots that air on AFN to inform individuals about, hey, you know, these resources are there. Whenever you get back in country, don't forget DAV's there to assist you. Whether it's job placement services, whether it's claims work, our legislative uh, initiatives, I mean, it's all on there. We want to get our voice out to everyone that can hear, that's willing to listen. Um, other than that, is what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring up our next person, um, which is Mr. Lamar Kowser. Anybody that you can recognize him because he's real tall, he's kind of hard to miss, but he's been with DAV for just over 17 years. Uh, he's a past department commander. Um, we welcomed him to our staff in uh, August of 2023. So everybody, please give a round of applause for Lamar Kowser. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> I'm Lamar Kowser. This is my information. Hopefully everybody can hear me. Can everybody hear me? I'm new to the team, but not to, new to DAV. So uh, I've attended a lot of these job fairs when I was a supervisor in the Baltimore office. And I can tell you that I've used these resources to hire staff as well. So hopefully a lot of folks here that are not looking for employment can take a lot of the information and put it in their toolkit and help some veterans, especially the ones that are transitioning, because I know we're talking about this stuff a lot now when we're talking about membership and increasing our membership roles. You're going to find that a lot of the things that we have to offer here are going to be attractive to those clients, especially finding a job. Employment resources. When you get to our DAV dot, uh, uh, jobs.dav.org page, you'll see a lot of employment resources. And right here where you see employment programs, job fairs, and employment careers with opportunities, it's a revamp uh, website expanded to add more tools and resources to spouses and employers. And we're averaging about 15,000 monthly page views. So a lot of resources right here on our, home, on our home page. The employment resources page is kind of where you want to land at, especially when you're out in the field, you're kind of helping a veteran and you want to find, the veteran wants to know what's the ROI for joining DAV. This is it right now. The transitioning veteran is going to really benefit from going to the employment resources page and putting in the keywords and the location. 
that says the veterans and spouses selections contains a job search with over 200,000, 225,000 jobs. Links to um, company specific career opportunities and resources such as video resume writing tips and other resources. So just for an example, and I know it's not in real time, it's, it was keyword section right there, you type in something that everybody in the military knows is logistics, right? So you can just put logistics in there and put a state like Phoenix. If it populates, you'll see that there's probably on an average about 10 to 12 jobs that's listed on there, but it might be 125 pages for them to click. So they can go through all of those resources and find something that's attractive. And in many cases, as you can see here as I filter through the screen, you'll see the filter, you'll see the job opportunity, you'll see that the veteran will also be able to uh, put in by the uh, zip code and location, like human resources manager, and put in location, be specific. And then, um, like I said, it says uh, 21 pages out of 200 current vacancies within the 200 within the 25 mile radius. That's what you see every time you put a job in. It doesn't matter if we're not having a job fair at that location, their employer is still posting opportunities within that website. The employment resources, the Patriot Employer Program, um, you saw, uh, I think it was yesterday, um, I'm getting kind of confused what day it is, but you saw where we recognized uh, uh, our, uh, our top performers, um, and we do a really good job with our, with our team here of vetting those employers and making sure that they're doing pretty much the, the, the good work of hiring veterans, integrating it, paying them a good salary, doing a lot of stuff in the community. And one of the things that we really pride ourselves with, and that veteran even appreciates this, is that we care about how a company is viewed internally and externally. And we take a really good job to make sure that there's high quality people that get nominated for those awards and win those awards. Patriot Employer Program, all employees who meet the eligibility requirement will be recognized and will receive a digital badge displayed on the website. I was new to the team and I believe it was like October. Um, it was St. Elizabeth um, won the award. Um, it was kind of hard to figure out who was going to actually come and get it. And I think some CEO just flew in because they were so excited to receive that award. And we gave them recognition and they hung that right there on their website. So they're really proud to receive that Patriot Employer Award. Uh, large, medium, and small uh, employers will be considered to receive recognition to our annual Patriot Employer Award. Um, employers who excel in specific areas such as hiring and recruiting, career building, retention, and commonly support involvement with the consideration for annual special events. One of the things that we, we encourage, especially uh, you guys, if you got an employer that you're really excited about, somebody that's working in your community, Give them the information, have them apply. You might, you might not know, they might be the next one at our, on our stage being recognized. Veteran Advantage. This is our uh, guide that was launched in 2018. It is a practice solution based booklet to help employers navigate the often unclear terrain of recruiting, hiring, and retaining veterans and their disabilities. It shows the tax sense of benefits using real life examples from real companies to benefit of hiring veterans. Anybody ever looked at that, um, that hiring guide? It's got a lot of good information in it. And we're probably going to be updating it soon. That's my slide. Well, I'd like to thank you. If, I'll be available for questions after this, and, but, but for now, I'd like to introduce to my colleague, Mr. Jeremy Yost, who has over 12 years of experience, Marine Corps veteran. I'm sorry for the front row if you only see my forehead. I am a little short. My apologies. Again, this is Lamar's information if you need to get a hold of him. Uh, but we will all be available if you have any questions. All right. So job fairs. Uh, we do over 90 job fairs a year that are in person. Virtually, we do about 18 to 20 every single year. So currently, right now, for the year, we're going to be around 106 at the end. Next year, we're already scheduled for almost 110. The 2025 schedule will be online soon. Uh, it is currently getting worked and we'll be up there as soon as possible, and we will be contacting our local NSOs to help us out in those areas. So my apologies, 110 out of 106. We did have a few more that were added this year as well. So if you go onto the website, jobs.dov.org, the second tab is for our job fairs. If you go on there and click, you can actually go to every single job fair we're gonna have. If you click on it, it's gonna give you a hyperlink, so it's automatically gonna take you there. You can do this with your veterans as well, so they can click on it and actually register for, for free on that hyperlink. 
you can also search for all the companies that are going to be at that event. So if we have 60 vendors there, you, you'll be able to click on every single vendor and see what jobs they have. Now one thing that we do try to tell these individuals is when it comes to the jobs that they have on there, those are not all the jobs that they have. We have what's called the hidden job market. A lot of times when we go to these events, these companies have jobs that they haven't even posted yet. Or they might be trying to fill a new position they don't even have. So we try to tell all these veterans, go and talk to every single veteran, every single employer, because you don't know if they might have the next opportunity for you. Just giving a prime example, I, I'd say this when I'm at the job fairs. When we think of TSA, most of us think, job, we think of airport security, correct? <laughs> right? They were there hiring nurses. If you were a nurse, would you even go and talk to TSA? Probably not. We had an individual that did that, and now she works for TSA, and she's happier because she has a better way of life that she didn't have while she was working in a hospital. So these are things that we tell them while we're at these events so they understand don't just go to that one company. Talk to every single one of them. Waste management is a prime example. Waste management changed their name because everyone thought that they were only hiring trash service. Prime example. So our 18 virtual job fairs, Ryan went over it uh, a little bit ago. We have one that's actually happening tomorrow. So while we're here, we're gonna be doing a job fair at the same time. And we, it's the transitioning army and spouse event. Doesn't mean that you have to be just army. Even Marines well, like us can do that. <laughs> so it's for anyone that is a veteran, active duty, reservist, or transitioning, or a spouse as well. They can go online tomorrow and talk to the companies that we have available. So if you know anyone back home, it's a free service. All you have to do is just type in your information, upload your resume, and talk to every single company at that point. Veteran and spouse employment is vital to DAV simply because they've signed their name on that dotted line and given X amount of years to this country and it's vital that we return that service to them. So one of the most impactful ways and things that DAV does to help end veteran underemployment and unemployment is our DAV Recruit Military Job Fairs. We host these all over the country on an annual basis and we bring employers from all walks of life. So today we're in Arlington, Texas at the Dallas Cowboys Stadium. We have just over 83 employers or exhibitors registered and just over 650 veterans and spouses that are pre-registered today alone. I want to wish everybody the best of luck in today's event. Do not bypass a single table and say, oh, I don't want to work for that company. They don't have the opportunity I'm looking for. You don't know what they have until you actually go engage with them, okay? Best of luck to you guys. Thank you very much for coming out. At these particular military career fairs, what we're looking for from military candidates is just that expertise and professionalism that they normally carry through their day and day in their career in the military. The best piece of advice I could give is ask your questions. Make sure you are networking. Take the time and really learn how to tailor your resume to the job that you're wanting. Come with an open mind. People see loves and they think, you know, truck stop. We own everything. If you want to work in IT, we have an IT department. If you want to work in marketing, we have a marketing department. We have everything in between. Sometimes we get discouraged like you have to have a bunch of experience or you have to have a perfect degree but there's a lot of opportunities out there to help people bridge the gap. Recruit Military and DAV have these job fairs specifically for obviously veterans, transitioning military members and spouses. This is a free service. Companies pay to be here so they're motivated to hire these military veterans for a lot of the attributes what we consider soft skills that quite frankly they're having a hard time finding out their corporate Americans with the peers that are non-military. People think, I was infantry, that doesn't translate. It translates to being in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing. That's how we start, and we can grow from there. We attend dozens of these career fairs every year across the country. Deer and Company is hired through these programs, and some of them have been hired right on the spot. And then when
when you meet somebody, we were making a lot of one-on-one -on -one connections. Get their business card, give them your resume, and follow up. The squeaky wheel gets the grease sometimes. We're gonna talk to 200 people today. I wanna remember the four or five that I really wanna have come on board. The most important thing I would say to any veteran is never quit and be pleasantly persistent in the civilian world. As long as you do those things, you will succeed. I think the experience here today was very positive. I think there are a lot of recruiters out here, a lot of different positions uh, out here as well. Um, I think everyone's very friendly, they're very informative. So I'm hopeful leaving here today. So any veteran or spouse out there that is on the fence or is looking for a next employment opportunity, make sure you visit jobs.dav.org. Attend an event near you. If there's not an event near you, attend one of our virtual events. Don't think that it just because it's a virtual event that it's a virtual job opportunity. You know, it's in-person opportunities as well. So make sure you visit jobs.dav.org and attend one of our job fairs. If only we could have done it somewhere besides the Dallas Cowboys hey. Stadium. Uh, I'm a Browns fan, I'm sorry. All right, yeah, there we go, come on. Yeah, all right, so every single job fair that we do, we post online before we're gonna do the event. So we usually post those two weeks up to a month before the event's actually happening. So if you guys are on our Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, or X, now known before Twitter, you can find all that information and you can repost it to your chapters, to your departments, and get that information out there so we can help more veterans find employment and their spouses. So here's the numbers that we wanted to talk about. So since July of 2014, so we are now over 10 years that we've had this department, we've done over 1,000 job fairs. We've had over 300,000 people attend them. Exhibitors, we've had over 50,000 companies that are wanting to hire veterans. We've done over 157,000 interviews and over 1,860,000 ,000 veterans. Oh, I'm sorry, I messed that up. Uh, 186,000 job offers. And when you look at that in the DAV interviews where it's higher is because there are multiple veterans getting multiple offers at these, at these events. My apologies, I didn't look at it correctly. Woo! Yo, 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 check this out. Just left the event, amazing experience, so many companies there. I talked to so many good people. My name is Marcus Harvey, a retired Air Force veteran, and I attended a DAV recruit military job fair. Uh, what really motivated me to join the Air Force was the fact that I didn't want to go to college right away. So I said, you know, I'm gonna try a different route. And that's when I looked into the Air Force and did my research and decided to join. And I felt like it was an instant career because the moment I signed up and enlisted to the Air Force, I was technically in my career at that point. I'm, I'm motivated. I can't wait to get home, um, use the connections I got. I met cool people that told me exactly what to do when applying for positions. I had to learn, you know, and each time I learned something new and learn a new skill and, you know, and learn a new interviewing technique, I just added it to my toolbox and, you know, slowly, you know, got better and more comfortable with the process of applying for jobs and interviewing until I landed a career. I hold my head a lot higher knowing that I go to work every day. What I would like to say to the veterans that's job hunting and maybe getting discouraged is just to, just to persevere. And you just gotta be open you know, to listen and learn because there's so many resources out there that you can reach out to and use, including DAV. So it's just connecting with them and learning and doing your research and understanding what you have out there and that they they have your back, DAV has your back. Yep, let's go, let's go get a job now. So. so 
So every single event, we have individuals that provide their story afterwards. Marcus was so happy after the event that he did that in his car and sent it to us. We got it before we even left the event. So next is our Patriot Boot Camp Director, Nick Brophy. Uh, Nick Brophy is our Patriot Boot Camp Director, is a community builder, economic developer, and entrepreneur who has worked in and around the entrepreneurial ecosystem for more than 14 years. Nick is also a Mustang Civilian Affairs Officer in the United States Army Reserve. I tried. I tried. Retired recently where his community of service includes earning the rank of staff sergeant before attending officer candidate school, where he was commissioned as an engineer officer before transitioning to civilian affairs. He is now re a retired major as of last month? No, December. December. Yeah. Just a little bit behind. <laughs> you might want to update your bio. <laughs> Nick Profi. I did that to him on purpose. Um, Y'all still with me? It's a long session to make sure you're all still here. I know it's the afternoon after lunch. Everybody still here? Great stuff by the, the employment department. Please, another round of applause for them. They kick, they kick ASF. You know? And for the secretary for joining us. Yes, another round of applause for him. Did, uh, did, did anybody have a chance to attend our Patriots pitch event that we had on Friday? A show of hands, yeah? All right, great. More than I hoped, but, or less than I hoped, sorry. But um, if you're not familiar with, uh, with Patriot Boot Camp, it's a really cool program that DAV acquired in 2022. And uh, although it has existed since 2012, when it was founded by some non-veteran tech entrepreneurs in the uh, Colorado area. And um, since DAV uh, is always working to, to meet veterans where they're at, that it, it just seemed the natural next frontier was an entrepreneurship. And so uh, we acquired the program with hopes of meeting a veteran where they're at in their entrepreneurial journey or inspiring them to begin one, uh, if that's what it means to move forward for them. Um, and so DAV Patriot Bootcamp is uh, an entrepreneurship program focused on veteran entrepreneurs and spouses who um, are in business or, or looking to grow their business uh, in the future. And so we do this by, uh, by hosting three, typically three cohorts a year. Uh, they're in-person cohorts, two and a half days. And in those two and a half days, we cover some really interesting topics in workshop style fashion. Uh, we introduce people to mentorship, which is arguably the most um, valuable and sought after and fun part of the program. And we do some things like team building and networking throughout that as well, culminating after the two and a half days in a short pitch competition, which then leads us to Patriots Pitch, which is what we held here uh, on Friday. The pitch competition allows us to, as a, it's kind of an extension of DAV Patriot Bootcamp and allows us to, to help entrepreneurs pursue the, the, the earning capital, non-dilutive capital to grow their business. So um, these cohorts are, we accept up to 50 companies in each cohort. And that's, a, that's actually a really large cohort. If you think about, in your local community, if you look around for entrepreneurship programs, there, there probably isn't any shortage of them. And while they're all very different, they're also not focused on veterans. And if you're like me, a veteran wants to work with another veteran organization when they're talking about building their career, building their path forward, am I right? Yeah, I mean, this is what we, we, we like to do this. So, um, but those cohorts are large. So please, if you're looking to, to, to grow a business that you have, who's an entrepreneur, by the way? Anybody in here an entrepreneur? I figured as much. And we have, and I see, one, yes. And I see one alumni over here, Patriot Bootcamp alumni. Who is an alumni of Patriot Bootcamp? Be interested to see, I know Eric's over here. Uh, and, and you'll notice we have a brochure that we, that is new, so when, when you've registered, you should have gotten this brochure. You can see Kim, Kim Hubers is actually uh, an alumni of Patriot Bootcamp. She's on the cover of this. Um, but this is a great program that allows people to, to really explore uh, being an entrepreneur. Uh, and sometimes that might mean that it doesn't work out for them. Sorry, let me hit this slide. You get more slides. Here we go. So as you look at, as you think about your journey, where you're at in entrepreneurship, if that's something that you're interested in, please reach out to us, of course. Um, but that, it doesn't end there either. So we do these three cohorts a year. They're typically traveling. In fact, our next program 
uh, which our last cohort of the year is in October, October 9th through the 11th. It's going to be held in Washington, D.C. with a partner of ours. Um, we still have spots available, so please uh, apply or encourage someone else to apply if it makes sense for them. Um, so we travel around, we hold these two and a half day cohorts, and we have a heck of a lot of fun. And, and while the education component is really nice, the most important part of that is community. So we're really focused on building community, and that community comes in the form of, um, of, uh, of mentorship, and, and these are people that, frankly, are strangers when they meet, and then end up becoming a valuable asset to an entrepreneur down the line. Uh, we've, we've even had uh, mentors who have invested in some of these businesses. So it's really, the sky's the limit. So if you know anyone interested in that, please, uh, let's get them involved. Uh, and if you yourselves are an entrepreneur and you're looking to, to give back in a different way, in a more unique way, well, we're also the place for you because we really want to get more people involved in entrepreneurship on the mentor side. We're always looking for more mentors. What a rewarding opportunity if you are an established and successful entrepreneur. What a better way to give back to another veteran. Uh, or a group of veterans. And I promise you that you will feel that, uh, that gratitude when you're done with it, uh, which we won't let you be done. We'll just keep dragging you along for more mentorship. Um, we do have a couple other things that DAV Patriot Bootcamp does, and that is an online webinar series called Caffeine Connect. And by the way, all these things that we record, whether they're a Patriot's Pitch, a Caffeine Connect, uh, they're all, you can find all of them on the, on the DAV YouTube page, uh, YouTube channel, excuse me. And we encourage you to follow us on our own social networks, DAV Patriot Bootcamp, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and, uh, and we stream uh, this webinar series on all those platforms, including Twitch, but most recently, as we've gotten more involved in that. So if there's, and, and really this is a webinar series that's focused on, um, on demonstrating a relevant topic for entrepreneurs. Usually it's an entrepreneur, a veteran entrepreneur who presents this topic, so we love to showcase them and showcase them to the, to the audience and the community, but also gives them the opportunity to teach something to entrepreneurs where they're at in their journey. So check that out when you get a chance. Uh, let's see what other, what other slides here. Okay, so I have a couple of examples of some of our entrepreneurs. And Mike Belinsky uh, was an individual that came to our winter program this year, um, Marine Corps veteran, and um, last minute addition really, and he had a, this unique swimsuit that was for kids. You can kind of see it in the picture there, but it's basically like a bodysuit. Think of it like a surfing bodysuit that has almost like pool noodle material that fits into these sleeves. And it helps kids um, obviously maintain buoyancy and float in the water who are not swim trained, but it also allows the, the, a progressive approach to, sw to training swimming by a, removing these pieces as a child gets more proficient and allows that child to gain confidence in, in what can potentially be a life-threatening uh, skill and really a necessary skill too. So just an interesting entrepreneur. I just wanted to showcase him a little bit. Um, Do Dr. Uh, Oscar Vasquez and Elizabeth Tenberg, they have a company called Cancer Immune, uh, predictive AI predictive analytics to to get ahead of uh, early detection for breast cancer. I think it's interesting that they're kind of in the trial process right now, the the, the, the trying process to grow that that technology. I mean, this is something that could potentially change the world. Uh, down the line. So just an, an idea of types of entrepreneurs that come through. And then if you were here on Friday, you probably got a chance to see Jonathan Cunningham, who won the pitch competition, which by the way was a $15,000 prize that he won. Um, and so Jonathan Cunningham, who's, who's missing his right, the lower part of his right arm, has a, a, a prosthetic company that uh, creates a more, essentially a more comfortable fitting prosthetic sleeve. Uh, and so he was our pitch competition winner on Friday, interesting guy, and, and, and if you get a chance, please reach out to any of these folks because they'd love to hear from you. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Other things we, you know, we have, we have uh, veterans, um, veteran entrepreneurs who get involved in all sorts of things with DAV because we, you know, while they don't have to be members, as you know, you don't have to be a member to access DAV services. Um, we encourage that, so you know, we hope that that's the case uh, down the road. But we, they get involved in things like the, the Recon Raider Remembrance Ride. Uh, I'm sure some of you have participated in that. The, recently, we had uh, uh, Dr. Maria Luque, who was, who was in the women's, featured in the Women's Veterans Report. Always an interesting thing to work with female entrepreneurs. Certainly, it's own, their own challenges. And we need, we need more uh, women entrepreneurs to come forward as well and, and be a part of this. And so we showcased her and her journey and her impact in the women's report. 
Um, Ali Amadi or T-Care, which is, uh, we talk about the caregiver support program that, that DAV uh, participates in. This is where it came from. It came from T-Care, which is a Patriot Boot Camp alum. Um, and then, you guys, you know, didn't give me, you gave me too much time, but uh, this is basically our team, okay? So our team is myself, Amanda, who I stole, I stole and hijacked from our legal department, and then Thad Earhart, who's a Marine Corps veteran who we recently hired. So our team grew between last convention and this convention. So this is, this is who we work with, and you can see there Robert Irvine, one of our favorite entrepreneurs that participates in the program from time to time, um, is in a picture with me there. But this is the team that gets the job done. This is the team that's uh, always innovating on the entrepreneurial forefront thinking about, and while there's a million directions we can go, there's a million things we can do, right now the core flagship product or service is Patriot Bootcamp. Um, a couple interesting t t statistics that I assembled over the lifespan of the program, so dating, dating all the way back to 2012, we've had over 1,034 participating entrepreneurs or vetrepreneurs or founders, there's several terms you might hear them called. Obviously, we've represented all 50 states uh, in, in our cohorts. We've had over, it says 1,013 veterans, but what this really means is, that means that there's a number of spouses in there. So we've had a large number of spouses um, in our cohorts, which is a, a big focus. Over 436 unique mentors involved in the program. I think that's a, lar a very large number. Um, over 424 hours of mentorship that we do typically in a given program. And that comes in the form of volunteerism, people dedicating their time in a mentorship role. Uh, again, you can see that we're 37% female. We're very diverse, uh, uh, naturally diverse in the entrepreneurial space. I think that's really important to call out because that's what we're, you know, we, we know that entrepreneurs don't look like other entrepreneurs. They're all unique and different. Um, so as far as what's coming up in, 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 our, in our near future, I've already mentioned our October program, and I hope that you encourage those entrepreneurs you know to reach out and, 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 get, and at least submit an application at patriotbootcamp.org. Um, so fall October 9th through 11 in Washington, D.C., we're working on our 2025 calendar now, and that should be out hopefully here by the end of August or so, uh, maybe a little bit after, but look for those dates and locations. It should be a fun year in 2025. And uh, if you know anybody that's interested in entrepreneurship, please don't be shy. Reach out to us. We don't bite. We're friendly people. And uh, if, there's any, if there's nothing else, I thank you all for your time.